Welcome to part two of my video about the Mac Studio for Composers. Now I was blown away by how many people enjoyed the first part and I want to welcome all of you new subscribers. Now in this video we're going to talk about composing templates and specifically should I use a VE Pro template or a disabled track template. VE Pro over the years has been a great solution to allow composers to keep all of their sample instruments loaded while allowing you to open and close your DAW projects. Since film composers typically create a separate DAW project for every scene, or as we call them cues, VE Pro prevents having to load your samples for every cue. But the question now is, are these new Apple Silicon Macs fast enough to finally make a disabled track workflow a viable option for composers? The only way to really find out is to build the best possible VE Pro template and the best possible disabled track template and to run benchmarks on the two. So let's start with the VE Pro template first. Previously I was using an iMac Pro to run Cubase and two Mac Pro trash cans running VE Pro hosting my samples. Then this summer I got to hang out with Zach and Leo, the composers of Cobra Kai and Weird. And they told me how they were using the Mac Studio with VE Pro loaded locally on the same machine. We, we both use VE Pro to set it up, but we also both have kind of a mix because we work on one computer, like we just use Mac Studio. And so like VE Pro is running on the same computer. And we also will have, depending on the project, like a lot of deactivated contact instances or other software instances that are more specific to the project or just that some stuff it's easier to have it in your template like that because you want to put a lot of effects on it or something than it is to have it live in VE Pro. Like for right, me, right. what lives in VE Pro is like the stuff that's really never changing. It's just like the orchestra right. premixed. So I knew that was the route I wanted to go. So when I got the new Mac Studio, the first thing I did was consolidate my two trash can VE Pro servers into one server locally on the Mac Studio. This took some effort because all of the plugins had to be updated to VST3 to be Apple Silicon native. So I moved everything over to Contact 7. That was a lot of work, but the benefit is now I have access to the new Contact 7 command, purge all instances. That allows me to purge the RAM of all my contact libraries with one click, which is awesome. The gracious folks at Vienna gave me access to the beta of the Apple Silicon native version of VE Pro. So I've been using both the beta and now the release version in production for a while. Stability has been excellent. In fact, I don't think it's crashed yet. So the immediate benefit of moving the VE Pro server locally is much better latency. On the old servers, I had a buffer setting of 768 samples plus one added buffer on VE Pro, which meant 1536 samples of buffer. On the Mac Studio, I'm able to run it at a buffer of 192 plus one buffer on VE Pro. So now playing percussion parts becomes a lot more fun, whereas on the old server that was much more difficult because of the latency. So now I have my VE Pro template moved over to the Mac Studio, and I've got 1700 tracks all loaded up, no latency. It's perfect, right? But then I started thinking, wait, do I even need VE Pro at all anymore? Because while having immediate access to all those tracks is great, there are a few drawbacks. VE Pro is a lot more complicated to set up. Mixing is less flexible because you don't have the ability to just put whatever plugin you want on any single instrument track. Also, mixing is a little bit different with VE Pro. You need to use CC11 and CC7 a lot more. Whereas when you're doing a disabled track workflow, you have instrument tracks and you can just use the volume automation. So it's a little bit of an adjustment. So to make this comparison, I took my 1600 track VE Pro template and I recreated it again using disabled tracks. The disabled track template is around 1100 tracks because as I was creating it, I stripped out a lot of stuff that I don't use as much. Also, you can get by with less tracks initially in a disabled template. Because let's say you want to add, add another cello part or add more percussion. You can just easily duplicate as many tracks as you need. For the disabled track template, I decided to use single instrument tracks, so not multi-timbral contact instances. The reason is, this gives you the most flexibility with mixing and routing, the ability to enable or disable single tracks, and to avoid MIDI tracks altogether. It's just simpler. And while this makes for bigger project file sizes, we've got all this computing horsepower, so let's really test the best versions of both the VE Pro workflow 
and the Disable Track Workflow. Then, in addition to the templates, I think even more important was to test an orchestral project. So I created a test project for both VE Pro and using Disable Tracks. This project is about 3 minutes long and uses 116 tracks. It's blending 3 to 4 string libraries, 2 brass libraries, and uses a good amount of percussion. It uses Contact 7, Orchestral Tools Sign Player, and Spitfire's Abbey Road Player, so a good cross-section. As I discussed in the last video, whether you go with a VE Pro workflow or a disabled track workflow greatly affects the amount of RAM that you should buy on your Mac. So since you can't upgrade the RAM later, before you buy the Mac, it's important to consider which workflow you may want to go with. My VE Pro server is using 102 gigabytes of RAM, with the Mac using 132 gigabytes. While the disabled track project is using 26 gigabytes of RAM in Cubase, with 41 gigabytes total used by macOS. All right, so let's run some tests. The VE Pro server takes five minutes and 38 seconds to load. Now this is by far the longest load time you'll encounter, but this only has to be done once every couple days. After more than a day or two, the VE Pro server will just kind of stop working and need a reboot. So let's start by comparing the load times of each template. Now this is for an empty project, so no notes and no tracks enabled yet. The VE Pro template takes 14 seconds to load, while the Disable Track template with everything disabled takes only 4 seconds. But things start to change once you have a full project. So the VE Pro test project only took 15 seconds to load, while the Disabled test project took 48 seconds to load. Overall, this isn't as huge of a difference as I expected, compared to how long things used to take in the past. Next, let's compare the save time for both templates. So for a completely empty template, the save time is basically instantaneous for both the VE Pro and the disabled version. But for the disabled track project, once you start enabling tracks as you're working, the save time starts to grow. So the save time for the test project with 116 tracks is 12 seconds. Meanwhile, for the VE Pro version, the save time remains instantaneous because you're just saving MIDI tracks. I think this is probably the biggest plus for the VE Pro workflow. Now 12 seconds doesn't sound like much, but let's imagine you're composing and you just thought of the, the perfect violin counterpoint and you're about to click record, but then autosave kicks in and it feels like an eternity. If you're a compulsive saver like I am, this can be a serious vibe killer. Now we can't talk about save times without also examining file sizes, because the two really go together. And when I was setting up the disabled track template, I made the discovery that sign instruments take up way less disk space in a Cubase project than contact instruments. If you're a big orchestral tools user like I am, this can yield tremendous workflow benefits. For example, just 100 tracks of Berlin Strings contact version adds a whopping 310 megabytes to your Cubase project size. On the other hand, 100 tracks of the signed version of Berlin Strings only adds 15 megabytes to your Cubase project size, a massive decrease. That doesn't just lower your Cubase project size, it also lowers your save times. I also tested 100 tracks of Cinematic Studio Strings and that adds 203 megabytes to your Cubase project size. The result was the same with both Contact 6 or 7. This was a big catalyst for me to finally switch all my orchestral tool stuff from the Contact versions to the signed versions. The end result was I was able to get my Cubase disabled track template with over a thousand tracks down from one gigabyte to just 287 megabytes empty. And the test project was 293 megabytes. Meanwhile, the VE Pro version of the Cubase template is only 18 megabytes empty and 21 megabytes for the test project. The smaller project size is a definite plus for VE Pro, especially when you factor in the auto saves and the number of cues that you write on a project, which can all add up to a lot of storage, especially if you're working directly on Dropbox. If you decide to use a disabled track workflow, you need to consider your storage workflow carefully such as archiving old versions of cues and deleting old autosaves to reclaim space. 
Deleting unused tracks will also reduce your project size to a fraction of its original size. Of course, we have to talk about an important aspect of a disabled track workflow, which is the time it actually takes to enable the tracks. Of course, with the VE Pro workflow, having all of your instruments loaded already as you're composing is pretty magical. Sometimes I'll just go down the track list and audition different instruments, and that experimentation is something I might not have tried if I had to wait for those tracks to enable. Maybe this four contrabassoon patch from Metropolis Arc would be great here. Or let's cycle through a bunch of percussion options to see what works. On the other hand, enabling tracks on this new Mac has become really fast. Single tracks enable nearly instantly. And for Contact 7 and Abbey Road, the first instance you enable takes a second, but then subsequent tracks enable pretty much instantly. Typically, when you work, you're going to enable a single track at a time, or small groups of tracks. But if you want to enable a big chunk of tracks, such as the entire Berlin Strings Library, this can take up to around 20 seconds. I personally would rarely enable an entire string library at one time, but I wanted to test this anyway. I'm just going to show you enabling and disabling some tracks in action, and you can decide whether or not it's something you can live with. Let's talk about buffer settings. I ran some tests to find the lowest possible option for each workflow. As I mentioned earlier, 192 is the lowest I could do using VE Pro. Going to 128 worked fine, but I got a small pop whenever I stopped playback, and that became annoying for me. So for VE Pro, the best setting I found is 192, and then in the VE Pro plugin, I set it to one buffer, and that works really smoothly. Depending on the instance in the plugin, that changes the effective buffer. So in this one, I'm at 448, and the latency becomes 9.3 milliseconds. And then for this percussion instance, one buffer still gets me 192 and, and 4 milliseconds. Don't ask me why, because I have no idea. However, with the disabled track project, I was able to play back all the tracks with a buffer of 64. Here's what the CPU looks like. I also tried a buffer of 32, which is the lowest possible setting. And while the CPU appears to still handle this with plenty of room to spare, I started to get some audio clicks and pops. The latency is so low here at just over one millisecond that it could just be that there isn't enough time for effects like my parallel compression or reverb to process in time which is resulting in clicks. So here are the results. But if you're wondering whether I can actually tell the difference between two milliseconds and nine milliseconds, well, no, not really. They both feel pretty instantaneous in a real world scenario when I'm playing percussion or string shorts. However, I can definitely tell the difference between nine and the 37 milliseconds of my old setup. So I'm very happy with the latency of the Mac Studio. Next, let's compare the time it takes to render 10 stems, including a stereo reference, using both the VE Pro and the disabled track projects. The VE Pro version took 14 minutes and 38 seconds, while the disabled track project rendered the same stems in 10 minutes and 45 seconds. This was a bit of a revelation, since stem printing is something I've always considered VE Pro will save me time at. And yes, the VE Pro project does load 33 seconds faster, but the disabled track template saves almost three minutes when actually printing stems. And the more stems you print, the more time you save. Then again, over the course of composing, you load your project a bunch of times and you only print stems once. So I don't know, overall, it's tough to say if one option is really any faster than the other. All right, so let's break this down and compare the pros and cons of each workflow. So when it comes to load time, save time, and file size, the advantage goes to VE Pro. Meanwhile, lowest buffer size goes to the disabled track version. Enabling tracks is a win for VE Pro. Meanwhile, rendering stems is a win for disabled tracks. Cost is a definite advantage for the disabled track version, as well as mixing and routing flexibility and simplicity. So the big question is, are these new systems fast enough to make VE Pro obsolete? Well, the thing is, the folks at Vienna have also done a great job taking advantage of all the performance of these systems with the new Apple Silicon native version of VE Pro. The latency is gone, and you don't need a separate server anymore. 
You don't need to worry about networking and you still have plenty of CPU left to run as many soft synths and plugins as you want. So I have to admit, I still haven't reached a definitive conclusion about which method I prefer. But perhaps the ultimate solution, and one I'll probably be going with, is to do kind of a hybrid approach. Since I have my VE Pro set up already, and I also now have a disabled track template as well, I kind of have the best of both worlds. If I need to bring in more instrument tracks or do special processing on instruments, I can just import any tracks I need from the disabled template, and they'll be brought in with all the routing ready to go, and I can tweak them from there. At the end of the day, I think it's important to keep things in perspective and not worry too much about minutes or seconds. Because let's face it, I might save a few minutes here or there, but that's all instantly wiped away the moment I get stuck on a queue and I'm staring into the abyss for an hour, banging my head on the keyboard trying to come up with an idea. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you. And let me know in the comments whether you use a VE Pro template or a disabled track template. In the meantime, I better get back to writing music. We'll see you next time.